What's up everybody, once again my name is Matt and welcome back to Let's Play The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. In the last episode we took on three shrines in the Heba region and also traded in some spirit orbs for another heart container and a stamina vessel. In this episode I've marked the location of the final three Heba shrines on our map and we're finally going to finish up this region so we don't have to worry about it anymore. Afterwards, I might actually move on to the next region, but uh, there are far fewer shrines there that we need to worry about, so it shouldn't take us too long to complete those. We are making progress, guys. Don't you worry. And a friend of mine actually said something to me recently that sort of changed my perspective on shrines a lot, so I kind of want to share that with you guys. Basically, he was saying that, yeah, shrines don't exactly play directly into the main story, but if you think about it, each shrine you complete is potentially a piece of heart. And sure, yes, you can use them to upgrade stamina as well, but, um, he really wasn't wrong, and once I heard that, it made me realize that shrines are just as important as, like, anything else in the game. So, yeah, that being said, though, I do want to get back to main story stuff as much as you guys do, so I am moving as fast as I can, that way we can just quickly go through and bang out all of these shrines. So the final three are fairly close by, shouldn't take us too long to get to, and, um, they're all relatively easy, and guess what? There is another combat shrine. I know you guys love those combat shrines. It seems like we've been seeing a lot of those recently. Like, almost every other video that we do shrines in, we have a combat shrine, which is kind of weird, because honestly, when I was playing through this on my personal file, for whatever reason, like, the combat shrines did not seem that common, but, um, now that I think about it, I guess they were that common, I just sort of didn't realize it at the time. But, um, I guess as we make our descent towards this first shrine, I could probably give you guys an update on my health. Not feeling any better since yesterday, but also not feeling any worse. Um, the cough did turn into sort of like a less dry cough though, which is a good thing. It means that whatever is like causing the cough is breaking up. So maybe I'm on like the road to recovery. Not too sure. Um, the good thing is I can still make videos, which is um, like obviously the one thing that I want to be able to do. So as long as I can still make videos, I'll be fine. I can, you know, work through the sickness. Not a big deal to me. Uh, the main thing is just making sure I can get a video out every single day. All right, so now that we're down here by the docks, um, yeah, like right at the entrance to this dock, you should be able to see the shrine right through that gap. Now, sadly, Link cannot fit through there no matter what you do. So we need to find another way to get inside. Now, here's the thing. The official guide doesn't even mention this because I've been referencing that every now and again to sort of look at the solutions that they suggest versus what I would normally do. And honestly, the official guide for this game is actually not that good, to be totally honest, because they tend to, like, not even include things like this. So, around this entire area are boulders that are bombable. These boulders that are bombable will unveil, um, you know, air currents. These air currents will take you to the next bobble rock, to the next bobble rock, and eventually they will lead you to the entrance of the shrine. The official guide makes no mention of these whatsoever. Like, I believe all it says is, yeah, just climb the mountain to the northeast and you'll find the entrance to where the shrine is over there. Which, that's not incorrect, but that's clearly not like the way the developers intended you to find the entrance to the shrine. And I suppose, like, intended methods for this game doesn't really matter because, you know, you are given the ability and option to do whatever you want. But still, at the same time, it's pretty obvious what they want you to do. And if you follow the clues the game gives you, you can find this entrance a whole lot easier. So, yeah. All those air currents lead you right up to this cliffside where there's some torches, and these mark the entrance to where the shrine is. It's just kind of weird how the official guide for this game fails to mention little things like that. And I suppose, like, yeah, it doesn't really make that big of a difference because you can still, like, find the shrine and beat the game following the guide, except that, you know, there are some critical pieces of information that they leave out, so... I don't know, man. I don't know. I suppose it's just, like, one of the things that comes with writing a guide for a game, considering you are, like, one of the first people to play the game and discover everything, so maybe, you know, you do miss something like that, and because you do, um, 
you write the guide according to your own experiences and not like clues that are in the game mainly for guiding a player to a specific object or to a specific area. I don't know, man. I've never actually like written a guide. I only do Let's Plays, which is kind of like making a visual guide, but it's not really the same thing. Anyways, this is Steady Thy Heart. First things first, we're going to light this torch over here. That way we can unlock this door. And now, well, we're going to very steadily make our way across this uh, rotating spiky pillar thing here. It's really not too hard. Just very carefully tap link forward. Don't like try and run off the edge. Trust me, I've done that before. You know, you hold the control stick forward just a little too much. Link decides that, hey, you know what? Jumping into lava sounds like a great idea today and just does that. So be a little bit careful going around these spikes and uh, you should be fine. Just take your time. The thing does not rotate that quickly. So yeah, it's pretty easy to not fall off. And ooh, this does not look like a good crowd. So let's just do this to uh, protect ourselves here. And I think all these guys are pretty weak. So yeah, we can just like take all of them out with um, one simple arrow. Those guys are not hard at all. Come here. There we go. Sweet. This might actually be one of my favorite shrines in this particular region just because it's not like as straightforward as the other ones. And don't get me wrong, I do enjoy the straightforward like one room puzzle shrines. Those are great, but um, I don't know. The ones that are sort of varied like this that have several different rooms with different types of puzzles are a lot more interesting in my opinion. Anyways, inside this chest we got ourselves some bomb arrows. Very nice. I will gladly take those. And um, now that we got that, let's just head over to the other side, do the same thing. Place the ice block right underneath us. You can also um, aim directly underneath you by tapping down on the D-pad as well. That also works. But yes, this will lift up that wall and allow us access to the next part of this shrine. Now, hit this switch and be very careful. Actually, go up to the left or the right because, yeah, there is a spiky ball that just loves to roll down there and hit you in the face. Trust me. That one got me like the first time I went through this shrine as well. So don't feel bad if you just like ran up to those wooden crates and got knocked back by that boulder because I don't know man, game's kind of a jerk for doing that, not gonna lie. Alright, inside this chest we got ourselves an ancient core, nice, not bad, not bad at all. Uh, make sure you do have magnesis on the ready here because yep, another one of those metallic spiky boulders will be coming directly at your face. And you just want to make sure you grab it and uh, lift it up and like over where you're walking because this is the final pathway that we need to take in order to reach the altar. So there we go. We are done with this shrine. Kind of easy, but um, I like the fact that it sort of incorporated three different puzzles into one. So kind of cool overall. All right. So now that we got that, um... I'm actually probably going to quick travel back to the shrine near that cabin that we visited in the last video just because like the next two shrines are sort of up north a little bit and um, it just so happens that traveling back there will save us a little bit of travel time. Also, you may have noticed in the last video when we were doing that shield surfing thing down the mountain um, at the very bottom of the advance course, like, our Sheikah sensor was going off alerting us to the location of a shrine. And that's just because, um, yeah, the slopes were actually going towards the north instead of the south, which can be a little bit confusing. But, um, yeah, like, we're actually gonna go towards the shrine that I marked with the red pin next. Now, I should mention something. Um, that red pin is farther to the right of where the shrine actually is because the shrine itself is more like in the middle of whatever mountain um that is nearby it's just that where i have that pin marked is sort of where we need to go in order to open the way to the shrine so very similar to like a different shrine that we took on um i think two videos ago at this point we sort of need to use the snowball in order to build up momentum and knock down a door. Um, so I placed that pin where like the snowball and all of like that puzzle is located. That way we could just go directly there instead of wandering around looking for the shrine because I definitely got confused trying to figure out how to get to this shrine. I was like walking all over the mountain, could not find a way in, and then I finally realized that, oh yeah, it's probably inside the mountain, not on the outside. Also, 
I'm not sure if that guardian to my left is um completely frozen and broken down or not. I have a feeling that um if I did walk close to it, it probably would wake up and start attacking me because let's be honest, it's like the only guardian out in this entire area. Like why would it not wake up and start attacking you? It seems kind of weird, but uh I'm not falling for your tricks, Mr. Miyamoto or Aonuma. You're not gonna get me this time. You can't pull a fast one on me. I've played this game before. I actually still have no idea if that one is um, alive or not. Like, I've never actually gone up to it. So, I'm okay with keeping it that way, too. Maybe one of you guys in the comments can sort of fill me in. But my assumption is that, uh, yeah, I probably would wake up. Anyways, let's use Revali's Gale right over here just to make traveling a little bit quicker. And hopefully, this will bring us right to where we want to go because... We should be relatively close. Um, once we get here, I will zoom in on the map and sort of show you exactly why I placed the pin there. And um, it should make it a little bit easier for you guys to find this area on the map because there's like no discernible landmarks at your first glance. But if we zoom in on the map where this pin is, um, you can see there's a little tiny square pond here. That's what you want to look for. And it's towards um the right of like the northern summit I guess but um once you get over to the square pond what you want to do is use cryonis to make a bridge of sorts using two ice pillars across this small tiny pond because here's what we're going to do right atop like this snowy area there are two snowballs all we have to do is like toss the snowball over the edge it'll go right where that pond was and of course now the ice pillars are there it'll cross that pond instead of falling directly inside hit the door, and unlock the way to the shrine. And that's really all we have to do. So grab the bigger one. Don't use the small one. This should be all you need. Now, if we just, like, roll it down there, it should build up enough momentum and uh, extra snow to break down that door. So hopefully that works. And it looks like it did. Fantastic. Now, what's really cool about this shrine is, like, the aesthetic going into it. Because, um... You'll see once we cross through this doorway, it just looks amazing. Like, check this out, man. This entire thing is a giant icy cave. Then there's this huge skeleton, and of course the shrine is right down there in the center. I don't know, I just love the way it looks. It's so freaking cool. I kind of wish there was, like, more to do in this area. More secrets and more stuff to see, because honestly, just the shrine is kind of lame if I'm being totally honest, especially since like how hard it is to find this area if you don't know what you're looking for. And you may have already guessed this, but um, yeah, that's pretty much all there is to this shrine. Like finding your way to it is the puzzle. So this is one of those shrines where you just walk in, grab the item and leave, which to me is a little bit disappointing because you do all that work, you get in here and then they just give you the prize. I was kind of expecting something a little better, but um, I guess I understand why they did this. Anyways, inside the chest we get ourselves a royal claymore, which is a pretty good weapon. Um, what can I dump to actually get that though? So I guess I can get rid of the drill shaft since um, I don't really need it. And uh, I really do want the claymore since it is a much, much better weapon. So I will take that. Alright, hello Mr. Monk. I found your shrine, so give me my spirit orb so I can get out of here. And good news is there's only one more shrine in this entire region before we're done. So, yeah, we can finally leave this snowy tundra. Like, you have no idea how excited I am to get out of this snowy area because... We've been here for a couple of episodes now, and honestly, I am just sick of looking at it. Like, probably one of the least um, visually appealing environments in this game. Because normally, this game does a really good job with having vivid colors or interesting things to look at. But there's like none of it in this region at all. Because, you know, it's always snowing, it's always cloudy, even when it is sunny... You only get to experience, like, the true beauty of these areas for a couple of moments right before it goes back to being a blizzard. So, yeah, it's not really visually appealing. Like, I cannot wait to just go back out to the lush, beautiful, green Hyrule that I remember from this game. 
But I digress. So, um, yeah, the final shrine is, like, way, way to the northwest of this area. It's basically on the corner of the map, almost, which is kind of ridiculous. Like, it's way far out there. And, of course, that last shrine for this area is a combat shrine. So, I mean, it kind of makes sense now, doesn't it? That should be fun. But, um... Yeah, I think the fastest way there would be for us to go around this mountain um, instead of just like, you know, crossing over it. So I'm going to use Revali's Gale here and just like start walking around back behind this mountain. I mean, I could climb over the mountain itself, but I feel like that would take a little bit longer and I really do not want to climb the mountain anyways um i'm pretty sure on the peak of that mountain is a korok seed so i will need to go to the top of it at some point in the future when i start collecting the seeds for this region but uh yeah i'll worry about that later and i probably should get back to uh collecting those seeds soon anyways since we are making our way back to where we got the master sword obviously that's where hestu is and um i could use a couple of more inventory slots i would say so yeah, I may do that, um, maybe like later today, through the rest of this week, I'll just start collecting the Korok Seeds, probably back in Hateno, since that is sort of like the third region that we went into, and I've kind of been doing them in order, so to speak, for us. I don't really know. I suppose it doesn't really matter which region I go to next, but, um, Hateno seems like a good choice. Also, hello there, Cracked Rocks. I wonder what secrets you're holding. Let's find out. So, inside this chest, we're gonna get shock arrows. Not bad, not bad at all. But, um, yeah, that's sort of what I mean. Just go and explore, because even though the game world might seem kind of empty at first glance, there are secrets everywhere. Because, like, think about it, man. We are quite literally in the middle of nowhere, on the side of a mountain, in a frigid, frozen environment. And there's still just like a chest there. Also, I guarantee you, one of those ice pillars back there, I'm not going to bother melting them myself. But I guarantee you, one of those ice pillars probably is housing some sort of secret. Whether that be like, or that you can mine, or like a chest, or something like that. And even again, here's some more rocks that we can bomb. So, three secrets, potentially, in just a couple of seconds. Alright, what's inside chest number two? It's a silver rupee. Not bad, I will gladly take that. So, yeah, even though the secrets might not be the greatest thing in the world, they're still there and you can still collect them. Anyways, there is the final shrine. We finally made it here. So, let's just make our descent and uh, prepare ourselves mentally for this combat shrine. It is another major test of strength, so... Yeah, like a level 4 Guardian Scout, I believe is what they're called that we're going against. I mean, I'm pretty much ready for it anyways, because we fought like a million of those just going through all the past shrines in maybe the last five episodes, so I'm not really worried about this at all. We should have like a good enough weapon set up to defeat this guy pretty quickly. I do actually want to try something though. Um, we got the Barbarian Leg Wraps like, I want to say two videos ago? I haven't actually tried them, so what do you say for this fight? We actually put them on and um, see how much of a difference they actually make. So let's go with the battle axe, um, and I'll put the champion tunic and the barbarian leg wraps on, and hopefully this will allow us to do work on this mini guardian. Let's grab Magnesis as well, and I think we are good to go. So let's do it, man. We've done this like a million times before, so I think... We are well prepared. Now, um, I do want to mention one thing real quick. So, a couple of you guys have been leaving comments, like, asking why I don't use stasis during these fights, and to be totally honest, it's just because the strategy that we have been using is pretty good. Like, it's also really quick. So, to me, stasis just seems like a little bit of a waste of time and also more of a hassle for what it's worth because look at that already he is down to 1600 health that's almost half of his hp done in like one attack series and sure that's probably because you know we have more stamina now our weapons are better and um the barbarian leg wraps are probably doing a little bit of work as well but uh yeah i just don't see how stasis can really improve this that much and i've gotten to the point now where 
I'm not taking too much needless damage from these fights anymore. Um... Let's actually swap into a Royal Claymore just because we have two of them. Why not? He's already down to like 600 HP, so yeah, I have a feeling we should be able to finish this guy off. Oh man, of course he jumped away. All right, so he's got like 100 HP left. He probably will start charging up soon. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, why is he doing that attack? That was weird. Oh, I bet you now he's going to start charging up. Really, dude? I have no idea why he, like, did his phase 2 spinning laser attack. That made zero sense whatsoever. But, hey, I mean, I guess it worked for him because he did manage to get some hits in on me. Uh, my fault for not, like, recognizing his telegraph there, but whatever. Not a big deal. Um, let me actually- I don't want the freaking spear, man! I wanted the battle axe. Get out of here, spear. You are worthless. Give me that battle axe, baby. That's what I'm talking about. All right, um, now that that is done, let's grab our reward and be on our way. Another combat shrine done. I think it's kind of funny how, you know, it's been like, what, three episodes and we still haven't burned through the temporary hearts that I got from eating that meal a while ago. So I feel like I've gotten a lot better at this game in general just because, you know, we haven't taken a lot of damage in like four videos. Given the amount of combat shrines that we've done, that's pretty impressive, I would say. Alright, um... Wow, we got done with all those shrines a lot faster than I thought we would, which... Not a big deal, I sort of planned for this in a way. And by that I mean I didn't really plan for this, I just know what I want to do next, so I suppose I can get a head start on that. Um... Since we are finally done in the Heber region, we can leave, and we don't need to worry about coming back here anytime soon. So, I am not going to miss this place, man. Not at all. But, I do want to teleport over to Woodland Tower, because there's a shrine nearby that uh, we can probably complete. And also, someone in the comments did mention that um, there's a weapon on top of the sort of skull thing on Woodland Tower, and I believe it's just like a Royal Claymore, which we have a bunch of already, but I'll go up there just to like double check and make sure it's not something better or something that I may want. Plus, I mean, it'll be good to show for you guys as well, and it probably does respawn every time there is a Blood Moon, so, um, you know, head back here to Woodland Tower or whatever and get yourself a free Royal Claymore, like, it's a really good weapon, so there's really no reason not to but um yeah i'm pretty sure it's just like stabbed right into the skull and i think there might even be a korok seed up here as well but both of those things i really have no desire to pick up right now and yeah it is a royal claymore so i don't think it has like any special bonuses or stats so yeah i'll just leave it here for now i may come back for it later on but um for now what do you say we just marked the location of the next shrine? It should be, like, around that area also. I forgot to delete this pin, so let me do that very quickly. And, uh, well, let's get going. So, yeah, right off there in the distance, um, that's actually a stable. So, of course, there is going to be a shrine nearby. And there is something I want to say about the shrines in this area. Um, including the stable shrine, there are... I believe five more in this entire region that we need to complete. Out of those five, I'm only going to complete four of them. Um, the fifth shrine I'm actually going to save as the very last shrine that I complete. And there's a pretty good reason for that. Um, I'm not going to spoil what it is because it's kind of a cool reward. And I know a lot of people are going to be excited once I finally do get it. It's just that... um. It's gonna be a while until we actually get it, considering, you know, we're not even, like, half done with the shrines in this game yet. But, um, yeah, just know now that there is one shrine in this region that I will be purposefully ignoring. That being said, though, let's head inside and see what this shrine has to offer. If I remember correctly, um, this shrine is kind of annoying for one thing in particular, and... You'll see exactly what that is in a second. So, this is the Tempered Power Shrine. Um, sounds kind of familiar, but, um, I can assure you it is a new shrine, although 
I think it does share a similar concept to one that we may have already completed. I'm not entirely sure. Like, my memory is a little bit fuzzy on that. Anyways, um, before we do anything else, we actually need the item inside that chest, so I suppose I can part with this for now. Don't really need it. And inside the chest, the game is nice enough to give us an iron sledgehammer, which might not seem like the best thing in the world, but um, it's so helpful inside this shrine, because here's what you want to do. We need to use stasis on this orb, and then whack it a bunch with our iron sledgehammer to build up enough momentum. That way we can launch it across this room, and um, into like a switch. Now that might sound easy, but trust me, it is not. Um, you can use your Sheikah Slay to sort of try and get like a better angle, but it also does, like, depend on how far you're standing away from the ball and... Hey, look at that! First try, man! Not bad at all. So, you have to kind of, like, make sure you're facing the right way and also be, like, the proper distance from the object that you're hitting. That way you can sort of make sure it goes straight instead of off to, like, the side. Anyways, let's freeze this block, build up a little bit of momentum, and, um... It should cause that giant platform to flip around and make a bridge for us. Now, I made that first part look really, really easy. And essentially, we are done with this shrine. Like, the altar is right there. But there is sort of an optional um, second test, if you will. This one will give you access to a treasure chest. But it's, like, way stinking harder so the game is nice enough to give you access to another sledgehammer but um i don't really want to take that one right now problem is there's a bunch of like obstacles in the way over here and there's no like flat platform um that you can use to have the ball roll into so this one is exceptionally harder um i'll try it a couple of times but just know that i've never actually been able to do this successfully before so if i do get it It'll be by total accident, and that was nowhere near close enough. I'll give it a couple more tries, but I'm not exactly, like, optimistic towards my ability to get this. I probably will just, like, go until I break both sledgehammers, because there's really no reason not to. But, um, if I don't get it on, like, this next try, I'll probably just cut the video until hopefully I do get it, just to save you guys some time. So... Um, this actually might not even work, but we'll see. Oh, that was max. Oh my gosh, that was so close, dude. It bounced right off the rim. Holy crap. All right, I'll see you guys in a second, and hopefully I'll get it. All right, so here's what happened. I used up both of the sledgehammers that the game gave me, and I've got absolutely nothing to show for it. So you know what? We're just going to get out of here. I guess that chest will remain locked behind that gate for the rest of eternity. Not too worried about it, though, because whatever was inside that chest, of course, we can find it somewhere else. Although it was kind of annoying, because, like, here's the thing. I got that ball so close to getting inside that switch, like, six or seven times, man. It would just bounce out every single time. So, I'm not exactly sure, like what I was doing wrong. I even started like counting the amount of times that I would hit it and I would hit it like one less that way it wouldn't bounce out but it would still actually bounce out or like it wouldn't even reach at all. It was just kind of annoying. No matter what I did nothing seemed to work so I guess that is going to be that then. I mean you can't really blame me for trying guys can you? Anyways now that that is done um you know what, we kind of did get like a head start on the next video that I want to record, so not too bad, man, not too bad. Like, we made a lot of progress, and I think I might end things off here, which I kind of need to do. I'm not sure if this video will end up being shorter or not, but um, I can feel my voice sort of giving out on me, so... I kind of do need to end things off here now. So if you guys enjoyed this video, a like rating would be greatly appreciated. If you do want to see more, consider subscribing. But once again, guys, my name is Matt. Thank you so much for watching, and uh, I'll catch you in the next one.